Don't build these massive deficits that pass debt onto our kids. Rebuild the foundation of America's strength with great homes, great schools, with entrepreneurship and innovation. Keep government as a, if you will, facilitator of freedom in America. We've now had 30 months of job growth, four and a half million new jobs, half a million uh, jobs in manufacturing alone. And the question now for the American people is, uh, do we keep moving forward and continue to make progress, or do we go backward uh, to the very policies that got us into this mess in the first place? Uh, we probably Pressure from the GOP for Mitt Romney to reinvigorate his campaign. Good morning. I'm Rolf Winkler. Welcome to the News Hub. We're starting right off with Neil King in Washington. Neil, good morning. Good morning, Rolf. Of course, last week, our own Peggy Noonan had a great column about really just appealing to Mitt Romney to, 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 to reinvigorate his campaign, maybe do some more barnstorming. What has been his response so far? Well, I mean, he certainly segued away from that huge uh, emphasis on fundraising and has uh, gone more out on the trail. We're going to see a lot more of that this week. Um, he's in Colorado. He's going to be in New York for um, some of this Clinton global initiative stuff and back out in Ohio. But the reality is that the first debate, which is the, the biggest event on the calendar by far, is coming up next week. And there's only uh, so much time that he's really going to be able to devote to campaigning as opposed to preparing for that. The clips that you just showed were great because they were basically what that debate's going to be all about and was sort of a synopsis of the two uh, candidates' own positions and what they're going to put forward next week. Mm -hmm. Now, meanwhile, Neil, you have a great story in today's paper, the, the A section of the journal. Speaking of the Romney campaign, outside money from super PACs, it turns out maybe you can't buy elections, really. To talk about people were expecting super PACs to have a bigger impact, weren't they? Well, I mean, this was going to be, and it still may turn out somewhat this way, but the ultimate year of the unleashed power of the super PACs to, you know, sway elections in a big way, the presidential potentially, certainly in big Senate races. And if you look at it right now with six weeks or so to go before the election and with a lot of the biggest work that they were going to do essentially already done, it's very hard to make the case that all this money that's poured into particularly the conservative super groups uh, super PACs has had that big an influence. I mean, on the uh, presidential front, they tried to make a big impact by bringing certain states into play, like Michigan or Pennsylvania. That hasn't happened. Uh, they've really worked hard and spent tons of money to try to get North Carolina, for instance, totally off the table. That state is competitive. And it goes the same way for a lot of the Senate races, where they put tons of money into Virginia, Ohio, Florida, trying to beat down the Democratic candidate there. And in all those places, that the candidates there are still up by fair margins. So they're looking a little weaker than a lot of people had thought. Let's remind people at home quickly what super PACs are. We're talking about outside, basically organizations that, that aren't maybe c connected directly to the campaigns, but have unlimited, can raise unlimited contributions. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're not allowed to cooperate with the campaigns directly, uh, but they can receive unlimited amounts of money from outside donors and, and, and some, depending on how they're organized, uh, donors that are also kept secret. And in a way, I mean, the, the unlimited part of it is what was meant to give them their strength, and they do, in many cases, Crossroads, American Crossroads, Crossroads, GPS, et cetera, have very large amounts of money. But the, the fact that they are outside is one of their problems, and the fact that they're not allowed directly to coordinate with the campaigns means that their messages oftentimes have been a little bit off, muddled, and, and don't have the kind of directness that the campaign's own messages can have. And I think it's clear that voters seem to distrust a little bit more uh, ads that end with, you know, this was brought to you by American Crossroads, which people don't really know what that even means. Um, as opposed to, you know, I'm Mitt Romney and I approved of this message. It, it's, it's just a little bit more suspicious, I think, to a lot of people. Meanwhile, as we head to, towards the first debates, what are the big challenges for President Obama? Well, I mean, you know, the biggest problems that he faces are clearly just the headwinds of the economy itself, the sentiment out there within the electorate that uh, the country is not going in the right, right way. There's still, you know, 23 million people that are unemployed or underemployed. And th those are the biggest forces and the ones that, in a way, Romney needs to tilt towards his advantage, considering the two candidates have really kind of come even on uh, voters looking at who's best equipped to handle the economy going forward. Okay. Um, we're going to see that uh, you know, play out in the debates. 
and um, there's really so little time left to really make a big influence on the campaign trail. I think we're going to see a lot of big rallies, clearly, but with fewer and fewer people out there to be persuaded.